Hello Internet, Jazza here. Twelve days after the UK electorate took a look at Theresa May on one side and Jeremy Corbyn on the other and resoundingly went, we finally have a government deal and a government that can pass legislation. Yay! The Conservatives, just shy of a majority, have ended up doing a deal with the Democratic Unionist Party of Northern Ireland. Now, Northern Irish politics can be somewhat complicated and confusing for those of us on the British mainland, so I'm going to be doing my best to explain it for you with punctuations of jokes. It's going to be loads of lols. The DUP are anti-EU but adamant about Northern Ireland staying as part of the United Kingdom. But they're controversial when seen through a United Kingdom lens, not least because they are the reason that Northern Ireland is still the only region in the UK that doesn't have same-sex marriage. This is somewhat ironic because when photographed together, the leader of the DUP, Arlene Foster, and the Prime Minister, Theresa May, kind of look like a straight-laced but loving lesbian couple that own three cats, have been together since the 1980s, and enjoy spending time with their nieces and nephews at the weekends. It's kind of sweet. They are also opponents of abortion and part of the reason why women in Northern Ireland who want to terminate pregnancies have to travel to the British mainland in order to do so. They also have some sketchy history with the Ulster Unionists who were kind of the dicks during the Northern Irish Troubles when, I mean, everybody was just very nasty to one another. Let's just say having the DUP round for dinner it would be horrific. It would be, it would be horrific. I'm hoping that Theresa May is really looking forward to um, Christmas dinner and having them round. It would be great. Many people have voiced their concerns about the DUP's social conservatism dragging the Tories further to the right. Although I'm not sure this is necessarily the case, because in the past the DUP have tried to be all things to all people. When we've had expectations of hung parliaments in the past, like in 2010 and 2015, Labour, as well as the Conservatives, have held pre-election like pact talks with the Democratic Unionists. And in the past, the DUP have basically acted like me on Tinder when I get a couple of really solid matches. Like, I'll hedge my bets, try and keep the fire alive for as long as possible with both of them until I find the person that's worthy of all this. I'm kind of a bad person when it comes to online dating. <laughs> the agreement at face value seems pretty straightforward. In return for support on the passing of budgets, the Queen's speech, and all proposals for the UK leaving the European Union, Northern Ireland gets some extra cash. So the Conservatives get to push for the Brexit that they want and that we all want because we're all Brexiteers now and Northern Ireland gets an extra billion in public spending for infrastructure, for their health service and for education, all of which are devolved to the Northern Irish Assembly. This from Liberal Metropolitan Elite London seems like a really good deal for Northern Ireland, but as a middle class southern English gentleman, what do I know? So I asked my mate Lyra McKee, who's an investigative journalist from the Catholic community in Northern Ireland, what she thought of the extra billion quid that is going to go her way. With reservations, it's good for us. But there's two other problems. I mean, it endorses, the Tories are endorsing discrimination by turning a blind eye to it. This is something countless London governments have done for decades through the history of Northern Ireland. I would go as far as to argue that the reason we had a conflict in Northern Ireland was because tensions had been brewing so long over um, discrimination against Catholics. And that could have all been averted had London been taking a hand on things instead of just ignoring the situation and turning a blind eye, right? London's very good at doing that, leaving the children to fight among themselves until they have to intervene. The Tories have a policy, obviously, of equal marriage. They've all but endorsed the DUP's policy because there's no concession here. Well, the DUP isn't... I would have expected that part of the deal for this money is you back equal marriage and you introduce the abortion policy, which, to be fair, I think they might, the DUP might have conceded on equal marriage. I don't think they would have conceded on abortion. Um, 
But essentially, we're going to continue to have this human and civil rights of women and of LGBT people violated. And the people who are doing it have just been given a billion pound deal by our by the London government. Like, what kind of message does that send? What message does that send to women? What message does that send to gay, bi, transgender people? It doesn't send a very good message. The message that I took is personally, in the long term, I need to get out of here. You know, this, like, how can I stay in a place where the, the new kingmakers of the not just my country, but the entire United Kingdom are people who want to deny me my human and civil rights. What's really interesting about what's happening at the moment with the government that we now have is that regional Northern Irish politics is now going to be thrown onto the national stage with its relevance. And us on the mainland, we don't usually have to pay a huge amount of attention to Northern Ireland. I want to know what you guys think. Do you think that this damages the Tories' legitimacy? in any way? Do you think that this is actually just going to be a chance for them to be able to push for the Brexit that they want? Also, just for fun, how long do you think Theresa May's got? Leave a comment down below, please. I spend as much time and money as I can making these videos as good for you guys as possible. And I'm supported and lucky enough to be supported by my Patreons, who are Robert, Laura, Ian, Lorenza, Helena, Rachel, Richard, Tristan, Alexander, Liam, and Lena. <laughs> Norms, lol. Um, uh, thank you to those, and if you guys want to continue to help me to create this space where we can uh, make jokes at the powerful people's expense, uh, then it would be much appreciated. At least go and check it out. We do a weekly, a monthly live stream. It's good fun. If you're not into that, then you should definitely subscribe. You can do so, bing, on the orb of subscriptions here. Um, also, YouTube thinks that you'll really like this video, so I cannot be held responsible for whether or not you like it or not. Um, uh, I have been Roman Rudonides, I'll see you guys later. Goodbye. <laughs>